Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it was a little bit cold. <laughs> Good morning. Everybody's awake. It's 10. I woke up around 7 and I was cold. So I went outside, I exercised a bit, came back, slept again. Sleep was okay. Wasn't as bad as I imagined. Now I'm gonna pack up, eat, and go. Give me a They're still pretty wet. Maybe I will not take them to prepare with me. It's extra wet, extra effort to try to try them again, which I don't think I will be able to before trip ends. So I think I will actually leave them here, come back on the way back and then take them. Now I will tell you the secrets of cooking. Fast and tasty. First, fill in the water and set to boil. We full asleep grot. Actually, when we were in Pripyat the first time in the summer, I did not sleep in the room because it was like so dusty and shit. This fucking room is dirty as fuck as it is. It's so much better than the outside. So we haven't checked this in a while. The radiation levels, 0.12. I think in Kiev it was 0.12, somewhere around there. So it's basically normal. 0.13 around here. Nothing terrible. As we move a bit closer towards prepad, it's gonna increase. 13, all good. Macaroni with mushrooms. Mix up some of this meat paste. Real nice. And for seconds, I have some oatmeal. I'm gonna refill water and uh, reap that, and I have a bottle left that's gonna be plenty. Right, food time. I cut the sausage and throw it inside. Reap that, and I have a bottle left that's gonna be plenty. Waiting for a little and done. So, my rice is ready. It didn't take too much, did I? Because of the very uncomfortable choice and very long road, there are a lot of muzzles. We call it all things and leave the house. I buy clothes. <sighs> Another beautiful Chernobyl day. So rained in the night it didn't rain much and it was very very quiet no animal noises it's just so fucking extra quiet yeah so this is it this is the village not gonna go into any of these houses because i think the house that we were in beautiful house is basically a representation of the best of what this village has to offer how much do we have left to walk 20 kilometers 20 or 25 we're probably gonna reach prepat around six so it is gonna be dark, but at least we can actually walk through the zone um, in daylight, which is so much more better. Wake up in the morning and start exploring the city. So this trip is mostly concentrated around Pripyat, 
just want to explore the city more than I did the previous time because we kind of like went through it real quick. This time we're going to spend an entire day. We're going to try to explore as much as we can. But after that, we're going to go. We should be spending about four days in the zone. Right. Bunker. That is a bunker, holy fuck. Maybe it was more of a, like a wine cellar or some shit. Bunkers were mostly civilian. And of course, somebody looked like they slept here. This is like the modern trash pit of uh, this village. I want to introduce you to the stalker's house. Where do stalkers rest? But die to the fact that the police now also know this place. It's dangerous to spend this night here. Holy fuck, this is kind of well kept. Damn. So this is the one police check? Yes. Yeah, it has beds and shit, damn. Yeah, it's very cool. Nice, okay, this is the, whoa. This is a review uh, of soccer school who was here. Oh, they leave a review of this place. Yes. 16, 10, 19, okay, this is October. Yeah, this is last. Winter. 9-11. Oh, shit. Ah, <laughs> oh, this is food. Food? Yes. This is if you don't have something. Grain, oh my god, that is sugar. Nice. Well, the reason we didn't stay here, of course, was Anton's paranoid about police checking. But damn, this would have been cool. Better to be safe. There's an old swing set. Oh shit. Oh boy. That's cool. Ah, there's another old trike. <laughs> That's like an old truck. That seems like a house that somebody stayed at also. It is 12 micro sewers, just the same as in the house. Everything's cool. Uh, stupid rot. Okay, now it's 11. As we walk forward, slightly increasing. Showed uh, 15 at one point. This is nothing to be worried about. Very stupid road. It is 12.20 right now.
So these go to Chernobyl power plant, right? Yes. The power is still on. If we would follow these, we would end up in the reactor. Okay, rest. Okay, taking a bit of a break. There is about plenty of kilometers left. 13.02, so we walked for basically one hour. And Don's doing his thing. Shoulders really hurt and thigh muscles really hurt. Also an interesting thing, this part of my leg right here, this whole side, I barely feel it. I don't know what's up with that. Something related to cold, hopefully. I'm gonna rest and uh, keep on moving, following the power lines. I'm gonna follow these for an hour or so. So now it's 20 kilometers from adduction zone and now Nine. Eleven. Eleven. Now we have nine and eleven radiation. Now it's 14. Getting closer towards the road. I assume we're gonna take like last time to the right side and into the third village. Radiation level is still the same. It's 0 0.12. Nothing to worry about. Taking a break. We've got about one kilometer to go to the road. We're dead. We should be in pre bed in maybe three hours. We'll see. Okay, so the road begins. It is 14.38. We're gonna head that way towards the village and then kind of, I think, prepad is somewhere there. Okay, this is central road. And here, red uh, roads of red forest and the uh, Prepet. So just like last time, this road is... You don't have to do stupid shit every time. Just like last time, this road is used by security, yes? This road is going to lead to the village, and from that village, we're going to go a bit off track, past the edge of the red forest, again, hopefully not through all the shrubs, onto the prepet area, yeah. Basically it. So now still only 10 kilometers. I'm a little bit tired. That's shy. That's Jack. And me. It is 15. We're getting closer to the village. Okay, it is only 10. I remember last time went to rest somewhere on the side of this road. The radiation was 50 just because we went somewhere into the bushes. Now it's 16. It was slowly increasing as we approached the village. So the road is there. We're gonna chill here, eat some food, rest up. Okay, little rest. Ukrainian style. Yeah. They were eating like um, ramen without water. There's not really a need to cook. I ate like a Twix, but I'm still hungry, so I'm gonna actually boil some water, make dorsch is massive. Ah, borsh. Borsh? Borsh. It's basically red soup. There is about eight kilometers left until pre-pet. I'm kind of cold too, that's why I want something more. 
through the whole way it was constantly like raining bit by bit we have minimally another two hours of walking and right now it is 15:40. so yeah i actually figured out what borscht is it's beetroot That's good. They're actually boiling water too. He's gonna eat something, taking an example. After we snack, we're gonna go. It's been a while since I last checked the dosimeter. Oh shit. 067. The same shitty fucking dosimeter where the limit is set 0 0.30. Easy way to give away our location. 067. That increased drastically in the last kilometer we went through. The radiation levels increased like by, I think, four times. Now we're gonna go towards the radiation station. There's this little house with like radiation detection equipment. I guess that's why it's in this area because the levels are elevated. I'm trying to see if they're gonna change. It's still not dangerous. This is very, very low radiation. As soon as I stepped on the road, I heard a noise. Wait, 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 wait. Think it's car? I think yes. We're gonna go around and try to either figure out or completely avoid it. We're at another road. The road we ran away from is right there. The thing we hear is right there. I don't think it's the car. This is the station. I fucking told you. I fucking told you it's the station. This is what we were hearing. That stupid place. To measure uh, radiation and shit. Cars do go here, and I saw like some damn fresh tracks. Definitely a car went today, but the low like humming noise we heard from like middle distance to the station it sounded more uneven, like a car engine. That's why we uh, freaked out for a bit. Hello, my dear friend. I know you're from radiation, but you're my dear friend. What the fuck are you doing? Put that sign back. This is my dear friend. <laughs> anyway, I think the radiation level is here, quite bigger. But uh, yeah. It's 1.33, truly increasing. And also, as we come closer, there is more risk of security patrolling. 16.32, probably an hour, it's gonna be dark. Slowly walk forward till they catch up. <sighs> oh, my dear friend, how much you have radiation? Okay, we need to go. It's only 10 kilometers. Jack, do you tired? Not really, not really. I can keep going for now. Because I've just eaten. <laughs> the temperature is also dropping and it's getting colder. Yeah. We're approaching the edge of the red forest again, and I fucking hope we won't have to go through all that like foliage like we did last time. That was fucking shit. Last time, I don't remember if I told you this, this road, if you follow that direction, you'll end up in Duga, but for this trip, uh, I chose to skip Duga because basically if we climb early, it's going to be dark, if we climb later, it's going to be more risky. This time, when we climbed down and went, it was 7, and we already had to run from security guard. This trip is more about a uh, pre -bed. So here we are on the road to Prepad, which uh, divides the Red Forest. Yes, I already see the power plant right there, right there, Reactor 5, the unfinished one. So there is Reactor 5, Reactor number 4, and this all, this is Red Forest. And we go and cross the red forest. We're pretty close. Since this path kind of divides the red forest, red forest is there. So we're basically on the edge of it. Last time, 
we went into that direction of the path which was very terrible basically we followed these like power lines that way are we going to go through the same path no now we we'll go to is more chances to actually just sneak through so we're not gonna try to fucking go the hard way Since we're basically on the edge of the red forest, let's check. 180 something it was. 140, 150. Radiation is increasing bit by bit, but still nothing dangerous. For this to harm us, we have to, I don't know, eat the red forest. This is the very edge of it. That is also like another part of it. This road kind of divides it. This is not the middle of it. It doesn't go through the middle, so it's not that dangerous. We're gonna be walking this road for maybe half an hour more, and then go a bit into the forest and actually go to the train station of Prepat. Too bad it's gonna be dark by that time, but maybe we'll come back in daytime. So this is red forest, this is forest near and I want to check how much radiation here. This only on this road. If I come in uh, in this forest, I think will be more. I think those were the replanted trees. 100% sure, but I think this whole area was burned due to the particle cloud that fell over here. It is 4.8 micro sieverts. Yeah, it's at about 6 right now. Still not dangerous to health, as I mentioned, but not want to live here. 1720. So yeah, it's gonna get dark real quick. Now more and more darkened. And I a little bit forgot for recording this something. Now we go to General Road, where we need to run in a little bit. But this road have very, very much we're hearing dogs coming from Prepet, and Don is guessing they're security dogs with security personnel accompanying them. Hopefully, we can make it out of their path of senses into our apartment. So, now we're going across the forest. This forest also very dangerous, have very much radiation, but we need to go across the general road. By the time we get to the station, it's gonna be dark. I guess the only thing we'll have to worry about is the dogs. By the way, let me check the dosimeter. One last time. 2.4. We passed the edge of the red forest and should be heading to the train station now. Right there, that's the military car going towards, uh, I assume, Rector 4. And we're right next to the road. So we're gonna listen a bit and try to run through. Hopefully it's just a single car. But since everything is so quiet around, we will hear the second car coming before it can see us. We crossed the road onto the train station. We're at the train station and those lights, I don't know if you can see in the dark, but that's Rector 4 right there. Cranes, I assume. Locomotive shit, I think. I'm going to climb top of this crane real quick. I hear cars passing there. I don't know if you can see, but I see the tip of reactor far there. Cars passing the road behind us. We're basically in pretty bad, just the very edge of it. All right, gonna go down, cross the station, and into the city. Further there is the actual prepad station, the big one. It is actually working. You see those two lights there. We are just at the very uh, edge of it. So 
We came to this fence. Behind it is prepad, right? Yes. So this is basically fencing all around prepad. At some points, this fence is knocked down, like the one near the Jupiter factory, but here it is standing. Cool. Technically, prepad is fenced off. So we come in in the prepad. And that is where we're gonna go through. Okay, light off. Don't lighten in the window. Okay. Don't lighten in the window, okay? Be careful for all. Okay. It's here. Take the single. Home sweet pile of shit. Now we gotta board that window. Yes. And start cooking food. Right, the window is done, thanks to Antoine here. <laughs> yes. Jack's helping with the flashlight. I'm so fucking dead. It is seven right now. Now let's see the radiation. But right now it's a 0 0.15. It's probably gonna be more on the roof. I'm gonna chill, make some food. Maybe I'll go on the roof a bit. Tomorrow, we're gonna explore properly. Uh-huh. So, this is our home now. That's... That's uh, sleeping shy. <laughs> that's sleeping jack. Howdy. And that's me near window. Whew, we have a big rest. Decided before I ate, I'm gonna go on the roof, take in the scenery. We're gonna turn off the flashlight here. There is the reactor. It's very quiet, only mild wind. Since it's cold, it feels more unwelcoming, more like I'm not supposed to be here. Feels quite scary. You can only see silhouettes of buildings from the lights of the reactor. Everything is dead, no animal. Earth is very big and scary in moments like these. But that's what makes it interesting for me. The feeling of unsafety. Makes everything more simple. Makes me focus on bigger details. Alright. Gonna go back in. Actually, 
I think this is, yeah. This is the old room. Well, I went to sleep on the roof, but they slept there. Yeah, 4G on the roof. Yeah. It's food time. And tomorrow. That's a real one. But was it big boom? Oh. Now I cook the sunrise, but with another additive. Instead of sausage, there will be pork. And with the editing of corn. And it goes insanely delicious. Very good. While the water is boiling here, I actually forgot to mention that when we were walking towards here, when we passed the fence, we heard some weird ass noises. Firstly, before the noises, looking kind of back towards the train station that we left, we saw someone, we don't know who, moving with flashlights. Close enough that we could see the flashlights moving in the distance. Once we passed that, we heard some like hooting, like ooh, ooh, that type of shit, very loud. It didn't sound like an owl, it didn't sound like a dog, maybe like a tiny dog type of thing, but it just definitely sounded like a human just fucking screaming or hooting or whatever. And it was like quite close to us and it was moving with us kind of. I don't know, some weird ass security tactic to scare us, make us start running so we can make noise, but that is stupid. Maybe it was some crazy stalkers just like screaming. But yeah, it was some weird shit once we passed that fence. So this is some kind of a porridge thing again? Yeah, tastes nice. Alright, gonna eat. Alright, so this is the setup. Yeah, this is fucking moldy and shitty as fuck. Howdy. My soul is not dry. I'm gonna snuggle up now and try to sleep. I'm dirty and I'm dusty, but I'm inside. Tomorrow should be interesting. Okay, good night.